In this step we will be using parts D26, a metal shaft from the parts bag, D28, D25, two small poly caps, D27, D24, and a coil spring. Alright everyone, welcome back to the bench. We are beginning step five tonight. So, it looks like I get to cut some more parts and do some fun painting. Um, one of these parts, D24, it calls to be painted LP48 and X26, which LP48 is a bright silver and X26 is a clear orange. So that's going to make this part look like an anodized piece of metal which will be kind of fun so that'll be fun so we are going to grab all of our parts d26 d28 d25 d27 d24 everything's off the d spruce so that ought to be easy plus there's a little metal shaft that we have to grab from the parts bag and two poly caps that we're going to need as well so i will be right back with some parts to cut out all right, I am back with the D sprue, so we are going to grab D26, which is right here. D25, which is right there. D24, which is going to be the fun part that we get to paint multiple colors. And D27. It's always nice when they're right close to each other. You don't have to do a whole lot of looking. All right. There are the four parts that we're going to trim and paint. Also, we need to grab one metal rod and two of these cool poly caps. There's our hosing that we'll need later for wiring. And it's more of a screw bag, so we don't need any of that yet. And more tiny screws. And, if I'm not mistaken, right in that screw bag is a little rod that we're going to need to pull out of there. So, that way I don't lose everything else. I tend to just cut a little corner off. And then I just go grab that one little piece that I need. And that way I can fold it back up. Great. The only piece that I want is right there. So I'm just going to maneuver that. That way I don't rip the whole bag and then miss it or lose any screws. And now it's like you're sitting there going, oh, get it, get it. one rod then I'll put those screws back in this bag so we don't lose it and I'll grab our little poly caps which it asked for too so I'll grab those Tamiya kits are real cool. They even come with a cool little screwdriver. All right. Put everything back inside its bag so we know where it is later. Back in the box. All right. So now we're going to just clean these parts up and get them ready for paint. Okay, now 
I'm going to cut that. And that smooth. And there's another part where we trimmed it off. Lightly go over that. Remove that little burr. That's nice and smooth. Can't even feel it. And one more contact point. Sometimes there's a little seam that runs up there. Try to remove it. That part is ready. Now this part has to be very smooth and perfect because it's going to have a anodized finish to it so anything that's not smooth is going to stick out like a sore thumb so that one is ready there's a little mold line right in there so I'm just gonna, I don't know if you can see it in there, it's a little line. So I'm gonna try to get that. Just kinda tilt it, my sand and stick back and forth so that way I don't get a flat spot. I'm just kinda trying to get rid of that line so that way it doesn't show up. Yeah, I think we got it. All right, that part is ready. A small little piece. I saw where I trimmed it. Just go around the edges. Make sure I knock down anything that's sticking out. That's going to affect the fit. All right, that piece is ready. This had a little bit of a burr on it. Got that done. Another little piece right on the top of here. Gotta be careful not to dig too deep with the knife. Smooth. And that part. Is ready as well. Now these poly caps, they don't need to be painted. So I don't think I'm going to cut those until the assembly period. So I'm going to move those up and out of the way. Same with this pin. Keep those together. Now it says that we are going to paint this LP70. This piece LP70. This piece LP70, and then this piece will be LP48 and X26. So I am going to go get the paints ready for those, and I will be back. All right, we have our pieces. Let's 
those will be painted LP70, which is a gloss aluminum. And this piece here will be painted with LP48, sparkling silver, as the first coat. And then, once that's dry, we'll come in with LP53, which is a clear orange. The directions call for X26, which is the acrylic line clear orange. But I'm trying to use all LP paints for this, so we will use this. I'm going to go mix some paint, and I'll be back. All right, time to mix some colors. So the first color we're going to use is LP70. I know I've shown how to thin paints before, but maybe somebody's just starting this video out of sequence, and they don't know how to mix paints, or it's scary to them to run them through an airbrush. So I'm just going to show how I do it again. Fast forward if you don't want to watch. So as always, I do one to one. One pipette of LP70. And then I use Mr. Color Leveling Thinner 400, which the 400 just basically is the size of the bottle. One pipette of that. I'll go just a little bit more. And I won't throw that one away because we only used it for thinner. And I'm going to take my not enough paint to use my battery operated paint stirrer so i figured i'd just use my little tamiya metal stirring stick so that is ready and while i'm at it since i'm going to airbrush everything at one time i'm going to go ahead and mix the lp48 that is going to be used on the one part that will be then painted over LP48 with LP53, the clear orange. Such a shiny paint, it's LP48 sparkling silver. It's almost like a molotive, or maltive, sorry. It's such a a shiny silver which is going to help that orange look like anodized metal. All right. Now we will go airbrush. All right. Now it is time to airbrush and have some fun. So the first piece that we're going to do is the one that's going to be two different colors. So we are going to shoot this little thingy. So it calls for LP70. So we're just going to take a little bit and drop it in my airbrush. Ooh. Adjust my spray. Got some coming out now. Not enough. I took the color cup off because I didn't want to dirty it up just for such a small piece. <clears throat> Just like that, goes from a gray piece of plastic to a really shiny, almost chrome-like effect. And that's going to help the transparent orange, or clear orange, 
get its luster. and look like an anodized piece of metal. So, that piece, I don't know if you can see it well enough, but came out really good. Pretty happy with that. So, I'm gonna clean out this paint and shoot the others. All right, now for the other parts. I bet broke. Yeah. Oh, the air brushed down a little bit. Sometimes adjusting the spray and the flow takes a little bit more playing with. Such a contrast in colors. All right, that's a gloss aluminum. And these parts. And I didn't turn my extractor on because it's just not enough paint to worry about right now. My head will tell me later if I did a, a good choice or not. But I'm painting in a in my garage, so there's a lot of open air and airflow through here. But if I was going to be painting bigger parts. I'd be cracking the garage door open and venting it out for sure. Especially if I'm doing a, a 2K clear. I don't need that all in my lungs. So most of the time I'll vent that and I'll wear a good respirator. One more piece. Keep turning the part in my hand. Make sure I get a nice even coat. That looks good. I'll give this another shot. Another shot as well. I just keep moving the part around, pulsing the trigger so that way I'm controlling how much paint is getting where it needs to be. And that will do it. Now I'll let these dry and we'll put a little bit of a wash on them. I did notice on the directions that these two bolts, eh, it's gonna be tough to see right here. These two bolts right here and here will also have to be anodized aluminum with the orange. So what I'm gonna do when this dries is go in with um, that sparkling silver with a brush paint that and then hand paint the orange over it so that way it matches the other cylinder that I painted. All right, see you back at the bench. Here I kind of messed up and took a phone call while I was doing the clear orange over the uh, silver cylinder. So what I'm doing here is I'm just applying light coats of clear orange over the uh, the silver cylinder to give it that anodized look. So with clear paints you have to be real careful because you have to build the color up. 
So it's going to take, you know, a couple coats to build up to the coppery color that I'm going for. I didn't want a gold. I wanted more of a, an orange or a, uh, a copper color. So it's just literally apply a little mist coat, mist coat, um, let it dry for a little bit, and then just continue to do just mist coats back and forth. So I'll uh, speed up the video so that way you don't get bored and watching my hand cover entirely too much. Which next time I do an airbrush video, I'll make sure my hand isn't in the way of everybody. So be back. All right, we are back at the bench. All the parts are painted. We got our orange part that came out really, really good. All it needs is a decal and maybe a coat of future. It's not glued on, I just have it setting onto that part. And we have two of the bolts painted the same anodized color, which I was wrong about. Actually, one is supposed to be orange and the other one is supposed to be X11, which is a silver. Refer to your directions to which is which. Sometimes I'm just dumb. So we have this piece, which is D26. It is painted LP70. This piece, which is also LP70. So we can actually start putting some things together and put some decals on to get this step done. So the first part it shows is putting D26 with the metal shaft, they call it, and D28, which was painted LP5, which is a semi-gloss black. So that part is right here. And it is painted. So we're just going to pull that off. And we're going to take our metal shaft that we have. And we are going to grab that part, run the shaft through it all the way, pulling it like that, which leaves a little bit of a recess under there, which is going to fit right there. So I'm going to get a little bit of glue. Some glue right around that edge. And we're going to glue this part right on the center of that. And just kind of hold it for a couple seconds. Make sure it's all straight. <clears throat> down just on the plastic part get that all on there I think what we're going to do is kind of set that off I want that to glue and set up but if I lay it down it might put pressure on that rod so I'm just going to go ahead and use a toothpick again and then that way I can set it in my little holder over here while I draw. Well, I can just set it right here. And that way the rod won't take on any unusual angle. All right, the next part calls for us to grab D25, D27, D24, which is our orange part, and these two little poly caps and glue them all together. So we're going to grab D25, and we're going to cut our poly caps off and try to hold on to them so they don't fly across the garage. There we go. <clears throat> And just like that, I lost the poly cap. 
So now I'm going to have to go find another one. I'll be right back. Okay. As I was telling you to be careful and don't lose them, I lost one. But luckily I found it on the garage floor. So all good in the end. So it says to put both of the poly caps inside of D25 right here. So we are going to take these, drop them in there, take another one, and I'm going to be careful with them this time and not fling them or drop them. So they are both in there. Now, I'm not going to glue them. It says do not cement. But what we're going to do is we're going to cement this piece to this piece. So it will go something like... I love trying to figure it all out. Like this. So... I'm going to put a little bit of glue around this edge. And glue it to that part. I'm just going to hold it for a minute. And then that way, it'll glue up. Because we're actually going to put a rear um, a real metal spring on here as well. Um, I forgot to pull that out before. That should be in this bag here as well. It's the same bag that has the screwdriver in it. And there is the spring that we're going to use. Because your rear damper is basically a shock. And all of this will go together and be hopefully held together. That's why you want to make sure all your parts are, are glued and set up before you actually assemble that or that spring will just make them pop apart. And we actually are going to be able to do our first decal on this orange piece, which is like a reservoir. So I'll have to find the decal for that. That's actually applied in the next step, but we may go ahead and apply it this step. I'll be back when these are set up. All right, all the pieces are glued and ready to be assembled onto the spring. So, calls for this first part here with the rod. The spring goes over that. And then this part slides on to that rod, forming basically the shock for the rear of the bike. So now I'm just going to put a little wash on it. And then this step will be done. But first, Got to put our wash on it. for a wash. Again, just trying to touch all the little details in here. Just a gentle touch and then the paint just transfers right from your brush 
It just flows right along the edges. Welcome back. I've got the part all done. It looks pretty decent. Camera doesn't really, I don't know, maybe it does capture how shiny that uh, orange part is, but it really looks anodized. It's kind of cool. It's kind of a coppery orange color, which is like one of my favorite colors. So um, in the next step, step six, is where we, it tells you to put the decal onto that little orange cylinder. So I'm going to put it on now and just to see how it looks in case I need to do something else with that cylinder. So I'm going to go ahead and put the decal on now. Um, so I've got a little bowl of water and a medicine. I save all caps from medicine and water bottles because they make good little pallets, this good little water holder. So we got the decal sheet and Part, uh, step number six, which we're not there yet, so just ignore that. But it's calling for decal number 41, which is going to go on that cylinder on the bolt side where we have the two orange bolts. So I'm going to look for, and there is decal 41. No, I'm not showing you. There it is, decal 41, small white decal. So I'm going to cut that out. And I'm going to get it inside this little bowl of water. I'm going to try to cut it as close as I can to the actual decal. course. Usually I cut on a harder surface, which this is a foam core surface because um, it makes video uneasy. But I'm going to try to get a different source of uh, work top that will actually work better. So I'm going to put this in the water. Let it sit for a couple seconds. 
and it says to put it right basically here. So that's what we're going to do. As soon as it's ready, I'm going to look here and make sure. So basically, it's showing here to make sure that you can read the brand upright. So orientation-wise, I want to make sure of how to read it. So we're going to get ready for this decal. I'll pull it out of the water. And we're going to try not to flip it over, but I did. So that is the proper orientation. Grab it with my tweezers, pull it off of there, and I'm going to set it right there. Now, I'm going to take my paintbrush, I'm just going to kind of move it around. Let's see, I'm going to move it around. get it all straight on there it's kind of hard to see because the the glare from the light but I'm gonna use my little q-tip here and kind of push down on the sides a little bit make sure it's all smooth make sure it's not crooked make sure it's straight on there like it should be And it's having some issues curling up. So I am going to get, I didn't think I was going to need it. So I'm going to get some Solvacet setting solution. And that will just help the decal curve a little bit better to the surface, but also help it adhere to the surface. So I'm just going to put some on there. And I'm going to just let it be. I'm going to let it be and dry, and it should come out perfect. So, there is step five, plus a little bit of step six, but just a little bit. Finished and complete. So, I will wrap this up, clean up my mess, and I will see you for step six. Uh, really appreciate you guys watching and subscribing. Um, I'm hoping you're enjoying viewing them as much as uh, I'm enjoying making them. So um, share them if you'd like and uh, like and subscribe. Appreciate you guys. Have a great night.